Welcome to Liverpool and the M&S Bank Arena. We're here to celebrate Eurovision coming to the United Kingdom. So let's start the show. So why is Eurovision coming to Liverpool? Let's take a look. Putin invaded Ukraine on February 24th, 2022. Most of the world united in its condemnation of this horrific war. On May 14th, the Eurovision Song Contest, a competition set up in the 1950s to unite Europe in music and cross-border broadcasting following the Second World War was held in Turin, Italy. Tradition holds that the winner of each year's contest is then invited to host the next year's event. The Ukrainian entry Kalush Orchestra triumphed with their song Stefania. We'd love to play it but we'd be in breach of copyright. Due to the situation in Ukraine, the UK, who came second in the contest, was invited to hold the competition on Ukraine's behalf. A short list of host cities was drawn up and Liverpool, the home of the Beatles, Silla Black and the UK's 1993 Eurovision entry Sonia was chosen. The 2023 Eurovision Song Contest final takes place at the MS Bank Arena in Liverpool on May 13th. So let's take a look around Liverpool. of Liverpool, I thought you were joking. No, I wasn't. But it's a bit too windy, it so is. I think we'll give this one a miss. Well, you can't visit Liverpool without going to the Albert Dock. Now, we've been here before, haven't we, Paul? Once. But do you know why it's famous? Well, the, for a lot of people. The Beatles! No, the Albert Dock, oh, specifically. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, Prince Albert? Uh, well, it's actually Richard and Judy. Way back in the day, this morning was presented from the Albert oh. Dock Studios. And uh, there was a big weather map out where a certain presenter would stand out and present the daily forecast. Let's say no more about that one. See Marcus, I wasn't totally wrong. There's a Beatles story right at Albert Dock.
And here it is, look, the famous Albert Dock itself. Do you know what it reminds me of? Paul. No. <laughs> well, okay, stay with me here. It reminds me of the Plaza Mayor in Madrid. Ah. Except with water. Now, you know why? Because it's in a uh, rectangle or something? Well, not only that, but it's surrounded by bars ah, and restaurants. Yeah. Very great observation. If you're a culture vulture, do you can always visit Tate Liverpool? Did you enjoy your visit? It was a flying visit. Yes. I'm absolutely furious. Why is that? This is Billy Fury. <laughs> Oh look, I see all these locks against the fencing. I've seen this before. What's this building? It looks very strange. It looks as though it's the Museum of Liverpool. Ah! Is that where all the other culture vultures go? <laughs> it sure is! Well, if you're a child of the 70s, you will probably remember the BBC sitcom The Liverbirds. And of course, they were named after the most famous building in Liverpool, which is behind me, the Liver Building. And look, that is a Liverbird right on the top. Marcus, aren't there two Liverbirds? Oh, so there are, Paul. <laughs> the memorial behind me is in remembrance of the 244 engine workers who set sail on that tragic day. Here's Paul with a traditional Ukrainian dish, and I'm not talking about Nikita from Strictly.
I hope you all know what sound that is from. If not, it's from Eurovision, of course. And since Ukraine were the winners of Eurovision last year, they are going to be representing Eurovision as the winners this year, hosted in the UK. So the dish that I will be making is a Ukrainian-inspired tangy slaw. Okay, so you may ask, okay, so what are we gonna put in this slaw? Of course, we're gonna need some mayonnaise, also some cider vinegar, some whole grain mustard, and for the actual slaw, you need red cabbage, white or green cabbage, oh. um, two carrots, one onion, one celery stick, lemon zest, as well as the juice of a lemon, and salt and pepper to taste. This is a quick and easy side dish, side salad, that you could whip up in about 15-20 minutes and it's non-cooked so it's going to be super good because you don't have to worry about frying or cooking time. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we are good to go. Let's start with the dressing. So we need 250 mls of mayonnaise. This is 450. So I'm going to need almost half of this. So why don't I just do it this way? Rather than do this. I just have... Okay. <laughs> I think I might have used a little bit more than half. So this is the cider vinegar. We need two tablespoons. Okay, happy with that. It's said to use two tablespoons of whole grain mustard, but we're only gonna maybe have like, maybe one. So I think that will have to do. And now for the lemon zest and lemon. You can smell the zestiness of the lemon because it's very potent and very fragrant. The secret with lemons is that you need to do it in such a way that you don't get the seeds into your sauce or mixture. So you hold your hand right here and then you squeeze into the palm so that it catches the seeds. But then it always goes into my dish though. So let's also season it while we go. So added some salt, and now some ground black pepper. To be honest, I think we need some more mayo because it seems a bit too lemony. Before it was all very um, 
uneven, but now I think it's looking more uniform and it's looking more consistent as a dressing mix. I'm happy with that. So I need to julienne the carrots. So I need to cut them in half first. And then cut them into strips and possibly even cutting them further to make them nice and thin so that they would be able to absorb all of the dressing. So these are going to have to do. So into the mixing bowl. So why don't we start the onion next. So this is one of those really sharp knives that we have because I think this will get it really nice and thin. Okay, this is gonna be the hard part now. Okay, so here are some of the diced onion, red onion. And you go. So let's cut some of this cabbage the red and the green one. Put your whole arm into it because there's a lot of resistance. Okay, let's see if I can get it in. Gosh, that's a lot of cabbage. Oh. It's not, not over yet. Oh, okay, so celery cutting time. So I'm gonna first cut it vertically or horizontally, whichever. Back to the cleaver. <laughs> Okay, so they aren't uniform in size, but I think this is gonna be like a rustic type of dish. Okay, now is the fun time where you get to incorporate everything together. So I have two spoons. So then you just keep folding it in. It has to be well mixed, otherwise some pieces are going to be less seasoned than others and it's horrible when you have a salad that isn't well dressed. Wow, I think I'm really impressed with this tangy slaw. I've, I've never actually prepared it from scratch. I think I've, um, I think people have always brought it, but I've never actually gone through the trouble to actually make it but I think this will taste great when it's time for the eating and the recipe states that you can make it up to a day in advance but I will be having this lovely slaw later on in the day so all I need now is some cling film to put around and then pop it into the fridge <laughs> that this slaw is ready to be fridged and chilled and serve as our lovely side salad for the main dish later on. Thinking of a Trump call today? Why not subscribe to our show instead?
Well, we've just seen Scylla, and we've had a lot, a lot of fun in Liverpool today, haven't we, Paul? Yes. And of course, we are here because of Eurovision, so we must wish May Muller all the very best of luck tomorrow night, right here in Liverpool. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>